Uh, my name is Jeremy Lopez. I'm with Newston.com. I am the director of business development there. Okay. And what is Newston? And mm -hmm. how do you spell it? It's it's N E W S T I N. Okay. It's a little play on words. We had a logo of a tin can, so okay. we put in the news inside of a tin can. Um, what is Newston? Newston is our, our global social news platform. Okay. There's a mouthful for you. Uh, <laughs> is that like Google News? Or? <laughs> is that, that's what many people ask us. No, actually what we've done is we've enabled our users to pretty much transcend or cross the linguistic barrier that exists with online content. Okay. We, so look, you're here in Europe and it, Americans have no concept of that, right? Because we all speak English. If you go to Kansas, they speak English. If you go to California, they speak English. If you go to Hawaii, we speak English. But here in Europe, you have like every country has almost this different language. and. And a lot of people here speak three, four, five, sometimes five or six languages, mm -hmm. right? Um, is that what you're trying to do, is try to get news across many different languages? Is that and, and that's what it is, is basically, you said Google News, and that's a perfect example. Yeah. Um, Google News has different editions. Google, in general, has different editions. If you go to the bottom of the page, you know it's English, Chinese, Japanese. What we have done is we have created the ability to jump across those different we have interconnected the editions so that they communicate with one another. So now when you're in the English edition of our product, uh, for instance, in the Web 2.0 category, and you want to know what the French are saying about Web 2.0, you can actually just click across to our French edition, and it takes you into the Web 2.0 the Web 2.0 category, and you can actually read the content from the French press on Web 2.0. Okay. And is it in English, or is it it's in French then? It's in French first, but we uh, we have a back end, just a, a machine translator that allows you to translate this content and so that you can actually read it. Very cool. So it's giving you the ability to find it, first of all, and then the ability to, to understand it. Because what good is content if you can't understand it, right? Yeah. Now, are you only tracking big city newspaper kind of news, or are you trying to do something like a meme random or tech meme where you're uh, using mixing in blogs and watching how the bloggers are uh, talking and, and rating the news? Right, and that's actually a big thing that we do. We really pride ourselves on the number of sources that we do. Um, right now, we're currently at about 60,000 different sources and growing, and that is news, blogs, press releases. Uh, in our new launch here in April, um, we're going to be adding, it's going to have the addition of social function as well. And so it's What do you be, mean by that? It's going to be discussions created by what we'll call editors that will um, be able to create within the topical category whether it be an industry type or just a company name, um, to be able to create their own discussions where people can come in and comment. Uh, and the technology that we have for the news where you can cross-language navigate and initially have it translated, you're going to be able to do that with comments as well. So if you create a discussion on, on this community and someone from Russia finds it and reads it and they put a Russian comment on there, you're actually going to be able to read that comment as well in English. So. Tell me a little bit about your company, how many people work there, how were you funded and all that. Okay. We, uh, we have about 30 people working in the office now. We're based in Prague. We, I came on board when we were about six, so we, we've moved up over the last two years. Um, we were initially funded privately by the CEO and owner, Frantisik Ravel, and uh, recently we just finished, um, well, we're in the process of working on round A investments. So we've had some mezzanine financing and another round before that to get us up to this point. Now, what's it like uh, starting a company up in Prague? Is that, I've never been to Prague, right? <laughs> we don't hear about very many companies that go worldwide out of Prague, right? But you're trying to build a worldwide business, not just a, a local pr Prague business, right? Well, right now it is. We have opened an office in California, okay. in, in Silicon Valley. Um, but the, the majority of our, our headquarters is based in Prague, and so... Uh, Right now, we're keeping it that area, but in the future, who knows? We uh, we can, we can start growing all over the place. We'll see. We'll see what the traffic does. So, what's what's the geek community like there? What's the entrepreneurship community like there? The entrepreneurship actually is is not as strong as you would find in, in Silicon Valley or in the U.S. But the geek community, I would say, is is very strong. Uh, the ability to find programmers is not hard to find to find someone related to tech. Everybody wants to do tech work over there, so that's really nice. I actually read an article yesterday that said uh, was comparing Central and Eastern Europe as the new Silicon Valley of the world. So 
that's pretty exciting. There is a lot of technology that's going on over there. What's happening to labor rates, uh, you know, salaries and stuff like that? Yeah, they're going up. They're yeah. going up. It's not It's not anymore the cheapest place to start your business. It's starting to become, I won't say more westernized, but it's definitely starting to, to go up. Yeah. The housing and just everyday costs for a business are starting to go higher. So which is good for us on the working side, make more money, but in terms of starting the business, it is a little more expensive. Well, actually, now uh, the United States is the new third world, right? Yeah. With, the, with the dollar's weakness. We're, we're hitting that, right, Rocky? <laughs> coming, over that coming over oh, here. Oh, yeah. man, is it so expensive here. <laughs> so, yeah. uh, I mean, in the past two years, the dollar's fallen, what, by 50%. So it's almost like we're paying double everything here. I was actually in the, in the States about six months ago and since that time compared to the check crown which is what we're in it's fallen probably 15 or 20 percent just since that time that i was in there so we're, we're seeing all that as well going on well you can come and uh, hire cheap programmers in california soon right yeah we, we <laughs> thought about it we're like maybe we'll just pay our programmers to work in silicon valley it might save us some money <laughs> oh man it's a sad world right <laughs> <laughs> but um all so why, all, did, why did you get into this what 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 got you to start this you know, getting into the news business. Oh, what what got me into it, or what got the company? Into well, it? both. Both the company actually. We started out as a, as a B two B. We were working um, with with some different projects from business to business, software um, consulting services based on uh, taxonomy development structures. Uh, we decided to switch over to the consumer side when we saw the potential for the technology that we have developed in terms of uh, a large taxonomy, and then be able to make it multilingual and interact between um, each other. Excuse me. Uh, and when I came around about two years ago, I saw what they were working on, and they were at the ground level, and that's what really excited me because I saw the potential from from where it was starting to where it was able to go, and that's that's why I jumped on board personally. But it's a uh, I, I don't want to put us in the category of news aggregation, but the whole aggregation in general on the web is a very I think a very strong industry, and it has a lot of room to move. We're not just looking in the news industry. We believe that what we have underneath the hood of our Newston.com portal has so much more potential. Um, I actually saw one of your earlier interviews with Plaxo, and it made me think because they're trying to knock down barriers or boundaries between social networks because everything is siloed. Well, in a sense, we're kind of trying to do the same thing with the language side of it. Those are the barriers we view, and so we actually see Plaxo as someone that we could possibly work with in the future to knock down a different barrier because you hear time and time again that the global world, we're a global product, we do this globally. But the thing is, is even in, in say, a Facebook or a MSN Messenger, I can talk to someone in China, but that's only if they speak English. And so you're limiting yourself. And so what we're trying to do is we're trying to knock down those barriers so that I can speak to someone who speaks Chinese. How do you do? How many languages do you do? Because I know Farsi. There's a bunch of bloggers in Iran. And I can't read them, and it really frustrates me. Right, right. Right, right now we're doing uh, we're doing basic Arabic. Um, we're not doing Farsi yet, uh, but we work in ten different languages. Um, we do Chinese, Arabic, Russian. That are the different alphabetical forms and what we use and then we use the major European languages and then we have two editions one US and one UK that is just different because of how we rank the sources so that the UK isn't reading American news because they really don't like to, to, to log on to the English edition and say everything's from the New York Times everything's from the Washington Post and so we have changed the two editions in that. And yeah, they have different newspapers in the UK. Who knew? <laughs> yeah, yeah. They're very, they're very on their BBC. They, they oh, want yeah. to stick to that very much. Yeah. <laughs> BBC and the Guardian and the, all that stuff. Um, what else do we need to know about what's going on in your world or what you're seeing? Because you, you, you come at uh, the world from a different place than you know s some startup in Silicon Valley. You know, right, who only right. sees the world from. Uh, San Francisco out. You know? uh -huh. Well, I think that's why we have taken the, the linguistic and the language approach is because being in Central Europe, um, a great example is I was at a, at a metro stop once and I asked someone for help. It was, it was a young woman and she responded in four languages before she finally got to English. I mean, the, the need for language in Europe is very well known and I think that's one of the major reasons that it, that it took off there with, with the different language bases. But uh, I, I was at a, at, a, at a venture pitch and someone asked me, why do we need this in America? You know, we, we only we only speak English, and it's like, well, that's why it would be a great a great product in America because you can use it to find the other language sources. Um, when we have fifty thousand, there's a lot of content out there that you're not reading, and you don't want to be just inundated with the major publications, the New York Times, the Washington Post, because there's a lot of other good sources out there that people aren't finding, and so we're hoping to give them the 
the channel to do that. How, how good is the quality of the uh, translations? Because that, that's one thing that's frustrating me. Yeah, you could use like uh, I guess Alta Vista had their translator and Google has a translator, right. but they're really bad. It, right. You know, it's, it's like reading really crappy language. You know, uh -huh. and it's it's hard to even get the uh, core idea of what they're trying to com communicate. How, how are you guys finding the translation quality? Well, we work. Uh, the the translation is actually uh, just a back end product that we have put on so that people can understand the content. That is not the basis of what we do. We work with WorldLingo and we find their translations to be quite strong. Obviously there are downfalls in certain languages. Chinese sometimes is a bit difficult, but we've had our Russian version tested and it was it, it was quite strong. People were happy with it. Um, all in all, you can definitely get an idea. You get, you get the gist of what the story is about. And as technologies move forward, we're only gonna be able to grow stronger in that field. So we have everything in place t to make it happen. And now as the technology catches up with machine translation, you, it'll be able to follow suit, so. How do you guys make money? How do we make money? That's a good question. And actually, when I get back, our boss will probably ask me that question as well. <laughs> um, we're, uh, we're an advertising-based company, so we, we're going to start placing ads on our website. We've recently uh, partnered up with DoubleClick, and so we're going we're gonna to start doing some work with them and get some big, beautiful ads on there. So if you're looking to place some Scoble ads, you know. We might. You know. <laughs> <laughs> I need more readers. <laughs> we got about 650,000 pages, so you, you got your pick of the litter. Very cool. Are you doing anything with uh, video or audio? Because that's becoming increasingly part of the news, uh, news world now. Right. Uh, at this time, we're, we're working with text only, but uh, it, it is an aspiration of ours. We do want to look into working more with, with video or with different cool. kinds of media that are going on. So. Very cool. Well, thank you so much for coming all the way from uh, Prague to Amsterdam. So, thank definitely, thank you very much. Yeah.